I'm Akshay Dawe. I've been with the company for about three years doing solutions engineering for the company. Uh, and in these three years, I've had an opportunity to look at you know, how different customers use our product uh, across different verticals and how our product has changed to kind of adapt to what our customers want to look into uh, from a data point of view. Um, I want to introduce you guys to V4, which is the, the current UI, the newer UI. Uh, but before we dive into it, I also wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of a recap of you know, why we are here or how we have come up here. Um, and I want to mention a particular study that we did uh, earlier on, a while back, uh, internally, which was to find out how different users use our platform. You know, when do they log in and how do they use it? Uh, what are the kinds of queries are they running? And it turns out that a lot of users would use preset content that we had generated, go into nested dashboards, uh, jump between dashboards, and then at one point would go into data exploration and go and dig in on that data. And it turns out that they will, they will run for a particular amount of time uh, sequential queries which try to maintain the context. So maybe you're starting at a particular, you know, looking at all of your devices together, but then you want to go in, only narrow on a particular site, and then narrow on a particular interface. Um, and so that's where some of this you know, workflow and, and what Avi talked about here on Sys uh, has come up in our newer version is we want users to log in, land on a particular thing that they care about the most, and then have a natural language talk with the system so that you can go in, narrow down your search every time you go and, and find something uh, that's, that you care about. And so when we talk about workflows or, or you know, the other aspect is, is th the way we try to take this approach is essentially split uh, different users into different modules or different personas. So we have people who, for example, if, it, if in the operate module you would have uh, users who would log in as network operators who really care about you know, what's the total state of the network at the given point of time, right? So, uh, I have not logged in on the network for the last three days. I want to f find out what happened in the last three days real quick and then dive in on what things that I care about. That includes a network topology map. That includes some of the quick views that we can talk about, top talkers and application. But at the same time, you could have a user who is looking at the edge of your network and he may care about, or they may care about you know, what your peering and interconnect looks like. Uh, and they're looking at a similar amount of traffic or similar kind of traffic, but in a different context. And we wanted to bring that context up in, in V4. Um, there is a lot of different modules we can talk about here, but what I'm gonna do is instead uh, jump onto our UI and talk about how this all plays out here. Can you guys see that? <clears throat> so one of the things you guys will notice as we get into here uh, on, the, on the V4 UI is uh, the menu has changed and we have lined up everything in terms of these modules which, which tightly align with the kinds of personas who we find using our product. And so the first thing that you will go in and probably get landed on is a network explorer, which now makes it easy for you to find out, you know, what, what is this total traffic. So it quickly tells you what tells you what your total traffic is, splits between inbounds and outbounds. And then you can look at a quick view of what different sites or properties in your network are doing, right? So we have been <coughs> starting to monitor GCP, Azure, we've talked about that before. Um, so you see a traffic on all of those different cloud environments and then on, of, on your uh, data center environments or your locations. Now this is one place you can quickly find out there is a couple of spikes in our particular uh, site and you can drill onto it even further. Um, the other thing which we thought is, is going to be very interesting and relevant for people looking in on their network is doing top talkers and top ends. So finding out what your top applications are, what your top devices are, what your top interfaces are, it's right up on the screen. We're showing you guys the inbounds, the outbounds, and the total traffic. But at the, in, in the behind, of, behind the scenes, everything is still uh, powered by the same database that we've talked about earlier, right? So if these are not the five things that you want to look into and there is something else that you care about, you can start bringing those up uh, so that everybody looks at the top end things they always want to look at. Um, the other th 
aspect that we have introduced in here is idea of maintaining context. So users like to start very broad, look at everything in their network, and then narrow down on a particular site. And then their next views, they want them to be related to that site. They no longer care about other sites or other devices. And so what you can see here is if I click on one of these sites here, it will only narrow down the context to this site. So I'm no longer looking at all 500 gigs of traffic. It's only showing me traffic for this one particular site. Or I could go back and look at you know, different things in here as well <clears throat> from a site perspective. And every time I will maintain, uh, maintain the, the context of the site. Now, we have a topology in here. Uh, we can talk more about topology. We'll come back to it in a second. But now I'm also looking at my top devices, my hot interfaces that are running in the network. And you would notice every time I go and click into these things uh, or into this site or device, for instance, here, I'm getting narrowed down into something that's more relevant to me, uh, something that I care about. And that here, I can go in and start looking at what my top talkers are, what they're not, and stuff like that. <coughs> Um, well, let me give you one example of where this might be very much useful. So let's go back here um, and find out you know, my top applications. We have a place here which can bring out all your top ends. One of those is applications. And let's pick up something very much easy to talk about, uh, just unencrypted traffic. So what this has done now is I'm only looking at all of my unencrypted traffic across all of my network. And it's showing me all of the different sites where this is active. Now, if, had I picked something that was custom application, I would quickly find out what different devices or interfaces is this traffic active on. Um, <clears throat> and then get into a, a quick view of so what's the next thing that I care about. Once I know what application I'm looking at, I'm caring about what are the IP addresses that are talking on the top application. So you can go in and start clicking onto or drilling into your traffic and get onto an IP view, which now tells you everything we know about this IP. What ASNs is this belonging to? If this has any CDN attribution, uh, we're going to talk about CDN attribution as well in just a second, so not, talking to, not stealing that thunder. Um, but this is a very much a narrowed down view into what you can uh, look into uh, from a UI <coughs> point of view. And then as Avi mentioned, all of the stuff that we did in V3 is always going to be here as well. So at this point, you can dive into uh, show this traffic in a data explorer view, which then gives you, again, the same access to look at all of the stuff that we keep a track of for every, every single flow record. <coughs> Um, keeping that in mind, or talking more about workflows, one other example of a workflow is on the edge of the network. So for example, if we look at something from a peering uh, standpoint or interconnection standpoint, we already have flows coming out from your devices. We do BGP correlation on those devices. Uh, we also have a context of what your sites are and where they are located. So we can take all of that information and find out not just from an ASN standpoint, what are your top ASNs you can potentially peer with, but find out if you know, there isn't a particular shared facility uh, that is close to you or, or you guys are in, in that same facility as well. So what you're looking at here uh, is, is a little bit of a peering DB integration and BGP correlated data. I'm showing us uh, you know, the data centers I'm in, how my traffic goes out to the internet, um, and then finally, where is it all going to, right? Uh, now, this is where a, a particular peering coordinator person can come in and start looking at what is it that I can peer with. Show me the top five views. Uh, can go in and create a particular peering policy, filter on it, and look at one of these ASNs in here. <coughs> now, this is a place where we would show you more details about that ASN and, and do more uh, peering DB integration to find out not just what kind of traffic Sprint has, or maybe let me pick up a different one here. Uh, let's pick up Facebook, for instance. <coughs> now, one thing you will notice that we are switching context here. So now that we are looking at peering and peering DB, what I care about is not just last one hour of traffic, but last 30 days of traffic. And so that's the reason some of these are taking a little while, but because we're looking at last 30 days of data. It will also show you how your traffic is split 
what Facebook does in terms of traffic ratios, what your traffic ratios look like. This is a little bit demo traffic, so they're a little skewed, but you should see heavy outbound in a proper production environment. Um, we put in policy notes, peering policy links. Uh, there is other information that Facebook can give us from peering DB. But then we can dive in onto your traffic and find out you know, what's the scope of this, right? If I go ahead and peer with Facebook, what is it that I'm gonna save? How many people are talking to me uh, or I'm talking to? Uh, show me my inbound and outbound from Facebook and break it down by different countries that I care about. Um, show me all of the different sites that are active uh, in this traffic, right, or in this network. And you can find out most of my Facebook traffic is coming from SFO. Uh, so that gives me a good starting point to find out if I peer with not just an ASN, where is it that I should peer with them. <clears throat> um, I know from, from the modules here we have talks about CDN and OTT analysis. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, connectivity costs. There is one thing that I wanted to show you guys um, as well here, which is, a, is an idea of a universal search. Um, in our backend, we, we host a lot of data and a lot of context for all of your traffic flows. And there must be an easy way for you to just plug in an IP address and find out everything you know about that. Or just as easy as plugging in, we were looking at Facebook. Let me do that again. <coughs> just starting to type in a particular name and it will give you a context of all the stuff that we know about your network for Facebook. Uh, are we talking about Facebook CDNs or interfaces that might be named Facebook uh, or just an ASN? Right, and you can click onto this, <coughs> and it will start giving you all the traffic that we've seen for, for Facebook that's sending to us, right? Uh, again, gives you sites, gives you interfaces, but what I wanna do here is show you how somebody from peering would use this, right? So now I know that Facebook is potentially peer for me. I can go in and find out what different sites is this most active on. Turns out it's more on SFO. Click into that. Um, click into this device that I care about. Um, <clears throat> and then it brings me and, and look on all of the interfaces there where I see, might see this traffic on, right? Um, I'm just gonna pick one of the top ones here. <clears throat> and we come in all the way up to an interface that is doing Facebook traffic. And this is where you know, possibly workflow for one person or persona ends and somebody else might take over. Uh, you can share these views between your teams, but somebody else can log in and now look at this interface and find out uh, how do I do traffic engineering on it, uh, which is a little bit of a different workflow, but it's all coming together here. Uh, and I can click on this guy here to give me a context of what is it or what prefix or, uh, prefixes are doing most traffic in here. Um, so we have SNMP readouts. We know what these interfaces are, what is the capacity on this interface. Uh, we take in flow information and try to find out what prefixes contribute to the full traffic. And then you can do things like uh, define what is health to you, right? So if 50% utilization is something you care about or is healthy according to you, you can run that. And then we'll show you what prefixes take up that 50% of traffic. Um, this is also one place you can see here if I, for instance, change this to 40, you will see we will start suggesting you different prefixes that will contribute to 40% and the traffic we can take off to keep you at the target utilization. Um, so for instance, if I you know, take some of these prefixes off, Now I know with these four prefixes, I can go back to my target utilization um, and then essentially open this up in an explorer view because we know about those IP addresses and this is a place now you can go in and dig in and find more information about the prefix that you could have potentially uh, rerouted. <coughs> so I won't talk through all of these different workflows, essentially the idea here is that we assist people in, in running queries and take them as far as we can with fewer clicks as possible, every time maintaining a context. Uh, that's, that's a lot about workflows. Uh, the other idea that we have introduced in V4 is about insights. And you can think about insights as, um, we have a lot of data in the background which we are not rolling up or aggregating. And because we store everything in full retention, we can go back and find out uh, 
different anomalies across that traffic, across different dimensions. So is there a particular interface that's doing more in traffic or is there a particular country that's now joined the top end list which never sent me traffic before? Those are the kinds of things we can bring up or surface up to a particular user. Again, in a contextual manner. So we have a concept called as Insights Drawer that will show you uh, stuff that's changed in your network and you can read couple of those. Uh, for instance, this one is talking about geographical utilization. Germany is doing more traffic, or we're doing more traffic to Germany. It's rose up uh, in, in the top end places here. I can click on go and explore more details, and it will give me a quick view of how this traffic looked like. It shows me the last uh, 60 minutes of traffic. I can go be beyond that, and it will give me a quick top end of what has changed in the network. What countries have gone up, what have gone down. And then the idea is that the same logic will continue as we talk about ASNs, as we talk about different customers, uh, where we can go and look at changes in your network. One other example I can give you here, which I personally like that it is up here, is, um, is looking at site utilization. So everybody here is in San Francisco this week in our office, and our office traffic has noticeably increased this week from last week. Um, we can quickly show you what the traffic looks like last week to this week. I can go in, click more on the details, and get even more details about you know, not just the bit rates, but the total traffic, the percent increases. Um, and then we can get into, as I said, again, more, more in the details of what, uh, what this traffic constituted of. Again, the idea here is that the, there is data for you to, to dig into, but uh, we can do a better job at surfacing some of these inside families, whether those be changes in, uh, in kind of traffic, which are authentic insights, or your own custom insights, which you can define in there's particular prefixes that you care about the most. You can define those in your custom insights, and we can bring out uh, deviations from that traffic really easily up, up on the screen. Um, I know I jumped through a lot of screens. Uh, and you guys are with me still, so at the end of I know. Uh, I don't want to take uh, Greg's talk, and I know Greg is going to talk about CDN and OTT analysis and some of the other things. Uh, so let me take a pause here and, and check with you guys if you have any questions, or I'll lead away for Greg. How do you get the data to Kintik? Is there a local appliance that ingests it, then sends it up to the cloud, or are you just sending the data directly to a ingestion point in the cloud? So we have a couple of, we have multiple ways we could do that. Uh, you know, some of our ISP customers would send it direct to us on the, on the internet. We'll give you an IP and a port you can point your flow to. Uh, but a lot of our cus other customers are also encrypting it before they send it to us. So we have a local VM we can put in your network. You can point your flows to it. It will encrypt flow and SNMP and TLS before it calls back home. Or you can do a direct connect with us. Do you have the NetFlow or SFlow collector locally? We could have one locally, which is our m mostly an encryption agent or a proxy agent. Yeah. We don't store the data. Okay. The data comes. Whether it's, you know, if we have a Kenta cluster on your infrastructure, then it would stay local. If not, it would be uh, for you in Frankfurt, for other people in Ashburn, you know, wherever the closest pop is. So, And you can also scrub octets. If you're attacked a lot, you might need slash 32s or 64s for, you know, DDoS. But if people want to kill you know some of the IP space because they consider it to be you know privacy then we can allow <clears throat> masking of the IP address also 